I'll show you how to assemble a hydroelectric station from available materials. I will show you an instruction that is simple and understandable for almost every person to repeat, which does not require special skills, turning and welding to assemble. Let's go! Thanks to all the sponsors for their support, this video was made possible thanks to you. The basis of our hydroelectric plant will be factory pumps, which we will make work in the opposite direction. That is, we will pass water pressure through them in order to get electricity. I ordered this little one on AliExpress. It is interesting that it is signed there as a hydroelectric power station. Let's see how much this micro hydroelectric power plant is capable of delivering energy. But it says 12 volts. Look how small it is. And in the photos there it is just huge. The second pump, it goes like for home fountains, that is, it pumps water pretty well. Power 19 watts, 12 volts. Now we will show you how it pumps water. We take the battery 18650, one piece. Power is on, listen to it buzz. Now let's dive into the water. Look, and in the opposite direction? No, it doesn't work. Well, I bought a third pump at a regular hardware store, this pump sort of pumps water out of the pool. Look, it is small, but very powerful, as the manufacturer claims. 1100 some incomprehensible units, 12 volts, 3 amps. We try. Well, shoot from this side. Very powerful pump. I hope it will be just as cool to generate electricity. But in order to create a pressure of water, we need to build a dam. To do this, I'm thinking of taking bags, filling them with sand, laying them out here. Accordingly, water will accumulate here. And from here we will take water, in a hose, which we will lay like this, along the stream bed, so that due to the difference in heights in the hose we get enough pressure. Enough pressure to turn our turbines. Wow, we chose not the best stream. Look, I found bags here. Apparently, someone has already built a hydroelectric power station here. Now we will take these bags to build a small dam again. Fortunately, they were not as heavy as I thought. We, probably, will not even rake sand out of them, and we will carry it. They are terribly dirty. Yes, terribly dirty. As long as the water is not passed. By the way, someone hung such things here. I don't know what it means. Do you see, along the riverbed, such white ones are hung? Just be careful, otherwise the black mamba will pop out. Yes, because it is poisonous. It would be nice to throw them on your back and carry. But we probably need two, right? My god. Let's check. Black Mamba. Black Mamba, are you there? Look how scary it is here. Yes, see for yourself. Horror. Horror. Look out. I almost flew away with it. Guys, I studied this stream in more detail, look, it's too wide here, I think the dam should be built here, it's the narrowest one. Water will be drawn here, but we will just enter the hose into this gourd, so that it is not pinched from above with a bag. And we will get a micro dam, like this, and water will be collected. Let's try, here is our hose, the diameter of the hose, one, some two fractions. Well, look how it is compared to the hand, here. Here it fits here, fits here, and now we will put a bottle on it, which will act as a filter, so that no small pebble will be sucked here, into the hose, and clogged it. We made a lot of holes with a soldering iron. And that's it, we are immersing this miracle here. Well, you see, the water is starting to rise. Water ran, everything works. Building a dam? Yes, let's build. Well, first we put some kind of flat stone. Well, it already holds, it no longer pops up. Let's try the first bag. Probably me. Like this. To shape the bag a little. Yes, we form sand in it a little. Frankly, I think it would have worked without the dam. But put it down. Look, it skips a little, but the water is gaining. Yes, it is gaining, so it went to my feet. It is gaining, and do you see the pressure? The pressure in the hose is rising. 
That's it. It's reached the top and starts to overflow. I think that the second bag can form it all a little more. Yes, there is a bag, a little to the left. Here, what a beauty. Just a delight. The only thing we need to do is slowly, because now there will be dirt below. Yes, people swim down there, and we made mud here. Do you hear voices? Do you hear them? Do you hear? Now let's see what happens. All the same, something is leaking our dam. In short, everything is fine, because now the water will go through the hose, the level will drop a little here. It's so hot here, guys, you have no idea, I'm all wet. It would seem, on the contrary, it should be cool. Look, I'll show you a trick. This hose, now you will see there. As I said, that's it, the next step, we'll just lay this hose down along the stream. And there we will try to connect our generators. Is water entering the hose? Yes. Yes, I see high water levels. Just awesome guys, it works. We've got 65 feet of hose, and we're expecting a full 33 feet of vertical drop. Do you know why? Look what's happening down there. There is a very steep descent, the rock is almost vertical. That's it, I'm going down, now I'll show you from below how all this disgrace looks. Let's go, guys. There are such thickets here, if only the black mamba did not jump out of the bushes. Black mamba. Do you hear these sounds? It's full of people. Here is a waterfall. Just awful. And here is the hose. The hose dropped. The water has gone. Look at the pressure. At first glance it seems a little, but look. It doesn't even fit in the frame. Pretty powerful. Now we measure the flow of water, how many gallons per second we have flow. To do this, we took such a huge jar with a volume of 1.6. And now we need a stopwatch. One, two, three. It's gone, look. Three seconds, four. Seven seconds and eight tenths. This tells us that we are getting about 0.3 gallons per second, maybe a little less. And this means, guys, that the flow power is about 100 watts. Well, if we take into account the losses in the pipe, then we get somewhere around 70 to 80 watts in the stream. To increase, you can simply increase the diameter of the hose next time. Well, now let's turn the flow of this water into electricity using the turbines that I showed. The first turbine we have will go, which they signed as a self-made hydroelectric power station. Let's plug it in and see how many volts it puts out. And we have such an adapter. Because it's got this thing that's very thin. So, connect to the hose. So let's put all these things together. I hope that water and wires are nothing to worry about. Well, I hope there is no closure. You see, there is water and electricity nearby. My God. Look, it's like crazy. Did you pull? Impossible to connect. The pressure is crazy, guys. This is what 33 feet of drop looks like. Let's pinch the hose. Yes, hang in there somewhere. We squeezed it to at least slightly reduce it. Oh, it's stretched. Open up a little. See how it hisses. Did you pull on this side? Yes. It flew. See how it spins like crazy inside? This is where electricity is generated. We connected a USB tester to this turbine. It shows us the voltage and current strength, all that is needed. Already blinked, even though you haven't cracked it yet. Look, 3 volts, 5, 11, no, it broke. Look, it's like crazy, already 12, hold on tight. 12.2 volts guys. Turn on the load. USB lamp. Listen, the tester is already a little underwater. As long as the tester doesn't die, the lamp burns, and it burns from the turbine. The voltage is high, somewhere around 8 volts, although it is designed for 5. That is, the calculated power turned out to be more than what we planned. Can you imagine? Let's try to turn on the garland. Not enough pipes, I connected a lot of light bulbs. You see, it works perfectly from this microscopic turbine. Turn on volt mode. Someone is coming. 2.7 volts. And we have guests, very untimely. We have another turbine. Here is such a thing. Admire. 
Yeah, it's getting dark just astronomically fast. But the experiments continue. Open it up a little. See how it works. Let go. Like a spray gun, it flies out. Look. Wow. Now that's pressure. It didn't work from a tap. It turns out that the pressure here is more powerful than in a water tap. That's it. 5 volts. It beats. Plug in to measure current. Limit 2.5 amps. Oh, the current goes in the other direction. Look. For some reason, a small current shows. And falling, right? Yes. Slowing down? Let's connect a real consumer. Oh guys. Look, from this turbine, they somehow blink differently and burn dimly. But I guess that there is a diode in it. I need to disassemble it and see what's wrong, because it only produced current in that direction. Remember, we tried from the shower, it didn't work here, only there. And try in the opposite direction, I also threw the contacts here. Stuck? Yes. Yes there is. It's bad too. Look guys, barely blinking. The turbine needs to be improved, because there are huge gaps, and the water just passes by the impeller without spinning it. Well, black. I feel it is vibrating. Oh, everything worked. Look how cool. It's all just from the energy of water. And I feel that this is not the limit. That is, there is really a lot of energy here. So, we see on our scale. We have 10. So we have 3.5 volts, dropped by zero, a little more. Yes, 3.5 volts guys, from 5, short circuit. We have 2.5 amps. Guys, we only have a 1.5 amp short circuit, can you imagine how it works? This is a very good result. I did not expect it to give out so much. It's like a good charger, for a phone, for a power bank. Finally, everything that is possible, we will connect to this one? Yes, guys, look. Everything works from this turbine. The brightness is maximum. It says 19 watts of power, but it definitely gives out 15 watts, that is, somewhere. How many amps did we have there? We're packing up because it's getting dark and hear all sorts of yelling. It becomes dangerous if there are snakes or something. Anyway, let's quickly pack up and leave. We returned home from the forest. And now I'll show you how these mini turbines work. And at the same time I will show how they can be improved to significantly increase the efficiency of energy generation. To begin with, we will open the smallest turbine. It is arranged quite primitively, here we can observe a small injector. See, there's a tiny hole in there? It forms a jet, which in turn is directed to the blades. Here they are, tiny. They spin up, and there's a generator somewhere inside here. Now we will unwind these bolts. The Chinese have screwed up. Well, guys, we have untwisted it. That's funny. There is a diode bridge installed inside. I did not expect this. It turns out that it can work in two directions. We have six diodes, a three-phase diode bridge, and two Tuntal capacitors to straighten this out. Yes, look, plus and minus are even signed here. And they go straight from the three-phase windings. Here they are, the windings, you see how interesting everything is arranged. Yes, carefully remove it. Here, the blades are spinning. Everything is simple. That is, the magnet rotates, a magnetic field is transmitted inside through this plastic, and on this side we just have a fixed three-phase starter. It's, wow, look, it's all sorted out like a children's designer, like some kind of motor. Immediately visible to the naked eye, compare the thickness of your finger with the thickness of the wire. It's incredibly thin. Therefore, such a weak current. How many did we have? 0.1 amps, I think. The Chinese saved copper. Guys, in short, this turbine really works, but its starter is so small, everything is wound with such a thin wire that we apparently won't increase it now. But it is really made as a generator, everything is ready, and in reality it gives out 12 volts, just the power is not very large. Okay, let's put aside all this stuff, now let's try to open the next turbine, already more serious. And here, most likely, it will already be possible to refine it, because initially it was planned as a pump, but we are launching it in the opposite direction. Let's go! There are also four bolts. Look how small the impeller is. But nevertheless, this pump gave us 1.5 amperes, 5 volts. It can be seen that the magnet is much larger here. Compare it with the magnet from the previous impeller. It's outside, you see, but here it's inside. And this one is very thin. 
But there's a problem. Everything else is sealed. We can't even find out what type of motor it is. In general, I had an idea to deploy this impeller, put it upside down. It, like a pump, disperses water outward, and we need it to disperse inward. That's how it stood. Well, it was spinning like that, dispersed. But everything will spin in the opposite direction, because it will be like a generator. From here comes the flow of water. We turn it over, and we will have it spinning inside like this. Write in the comments if it will work or not. And the second thing that confuses me wildly, look how big the area is here. I mean, there's a huge gap there, and the water just bypasses. It may not be very noticeable on the video, but in reality it can be seen that two impellers can fit here. The fact is that when you assemble it, you can clearly see through this hole that our turbine, it is not in the right place. See, it's not in the middle, it's shifted to the left. Now we'll put this thing in the middle to achieve maximum efficiency. In short, guys, this is the idea, with the help of gaskets that we cut out of such thick thick adhesive tape, I want to ensure that there are no huge gaps around this impeller, that is, that all the water goes to it, and not into holes. Guys, here is such a contraption turned out. Now we will push it in there. Yes, it's done. Let's try the rotor. We try the rotor. Well, the gap. It worked. Well, guys, we cut out two gaskets. Here they are. Look, they are glued on one side. And glue it very carefully here. We insert the turbine. And we have a very small gap. And this should significantly increase the pumping of water. We put exactly the same gasket on top. Gently put it here and glued it. Even with the naked eye you can see that this channel, it does not overlap. That is, the gasket is slightly lower. As long as it doesn't come off while working, but everything should be fine. There will be water coming out, respectively. Now it remains only to test the whole thing on our waterfall. One more thing guys. To determine whether a pump can work as a generator, one key point must be considered. If the pump is powered by a 220 volt AC network, it most likely will not be able to work as a generator, because there is a synchronous motor. But if the pump is powered by direct current, like ours, plus minus, then most likely it will be able to work as a generator, because it has magnets. And now it's time to redo our last pump, the most powerful and most complex. Guys, well, this pump disappointed me. See how much more it is than this, while it produces much less energy. What's wrong with it? The voltage is very low. The LED garland barely burned from it. It says 3 amperes, 12 volts. It would seem that it is the most powerful. What is wrong with it, now we will open. Guys, it took a lot of effort to open it, but look. It gave us nothing. Moreover, look what a strange turbine is here, it is not clear how it works. It sucks water in here, then gets into the impeller here, spins it with the help of centrifugal force and flows out here, apparently cooling the motor, and then it enters this hole. In short, such a pump is not well suited for a generator. In short guys, we don't know how to open it at all, so we had to cut it like this with a soldering iron. Now you can see what's inside. There's a motor. Hefty. There are no diodes. The motor is right there. Look. We broke the soldering iron. Bent over? Yes. It's a pity. Okay, we're taking off the blades, guys. We try not to break anything. Yes, let's go. Try not to shake the body too much. Take it off. Yes, things went well. It flew away. Hefty motor, I want to note, something like a screwdriver, right? That is, the power is really large, but that's the whole design. By the way, this is a collector motor, for those who are not in the know, there is a collector with brushes inside, winding, and there is a collector. This suggests that such a motor works fine in generator mode. Here we see vacuum protection, so that water does not enter the motor, here it is installed, so that it does not flow down the rotor. It turns out that the whole problem of this pump lies in this small turbine. It was because of it that it normally did not generate water. If I could put it like this. Yes, maybe we can do something like that. Honestly, this is some nonsense. There should be minimal gaps, but here they will be just huge. We can say that we broke in vain. Right, guys, what can be done with this miracle pump? And we will think. We continue the experiment, so we return to the stream again to test our modified mini-turbine. And now we will try to squeeze the maximum out of it. This is such a mountain road. Oh my gosh. 
During the experiment, such a problem was revealed that a large vacuum is created in the upper part of this hose, it begins to compress. Therefore, for a hydroelectric plant, it is better to use a more rigid plastic pipe. Then, according to our calculations, the flow will produce at least one kilowatt of energy. In our case, due to large losses, 100 watts of energy remains, according to this formula. But even this energy will be enough to spin this small turbine. Guys, for $7 such a turbine is sold on AliExpress. I'll leave the link in the description. This time we took this tool chair with us into the woods, to which we will tie our turbine so that it does not fly around here and splash all our electronics. Because last time our USB tester was out of order. So, well, just in case, we will put on collars. We tie it to the leg of our impromptu electric chair. Blue electrical tape will help even in such difficult situations. Look what cockroaches. My god. And look at its mustache. The mustache is bigger than it is. This is a weevil. Come on, let's connect. Just hurry before the weevils get on our energy chair. So, we start our power unit. Now let's make it cool so that nothing breaks and splashes. We stretch the hose. Do you hear this sound? Oh, the pressure is good. As long as it doesn't break. Is the generator humming? Yes, there is a vibration. I watch the tension. There are 5 volts. And what do we do in such a case? We connect all our devices. We start again with the USB tester. You can hear the RPM drop. And our USB tester shows 3.5 volts, 3.7, 4.18. The tension jumps. Can it jump like that? Now we will check how many devices this micro generator can withstand. Let's connect the garlands, as many as three pieces. It's light now, so you can't see very well, but in fact, they burn very brightly. We move on. The most useful thing in such a heat is a fan. The wind blew. Bliss. Look, guys, you can even see a small drawdown. Pay attention, the USB lamp is one. The fan is two. Three separate garlands. Bright. Everything works. Come on, we still have the last connector. Let's try to turn on the power bank there. There is no longer enough for a power bank, but we can turn something off. And the indicator flashed. Well, guys, we unscrewed our generator, our turbine, and look what's inside. In short, there are pucks were torn off inside and ground. Our improvement didn't make sense, guys. Unwound. See how the puck rolled. Everything must be made of very durable materials, because the pressure is high, everything is torn off. For fun, we connected two turbines at once. The water goes into this, and goes into this one. And do you know what happened? This small fry has started to work, it gives out 12 volts. But this one stopped working, the flow rate decreased and everything went out for us. The USB tester shows below 3 volts, it does not glow. Now turn it off. And immediately everything worked. Two turbines are not working, there is not enough flow. But nevertheless, even such a cheap turbine with a piece of hose can fully charge all USB devices. So, this is how our today's pump experiment ended. Well, in the next part, we want to try to create a powerful power plant from irrigation pumps that can power an entire house. Write in the comments which factory turbo units are best suited for this purpose. And we will choose the best options and test. For you, we are preparing the next part, where we want to buy a large hydroelectric power plant and make a radical upgrade of our pumps in order to conduct experiments and compare their power. We will compare expensive professional pumps with ordinary budget homemade ones. You can help us raise funds for this video by supporting us in YouTube sponsorship or Patreon.